In this video, we'll look at the intrusion prevention system and the intrusion detection system. We'll look at why we need them, we'll look at the disadvantages and advantages of the IPS and the IDS, we'll look at the different detection methodologies that we can have, then we'll consider the actions that can be taken when an attack is detected, and we'll consider different terminologies. So we'll talk about intrusion prevention systems, that's IPS, and intrusion detection systems, that's IDS. Now let's answer the question, why? Why do we need these devices? Now for example, on your network, you know that a user can download an email that is virus leading. Now this type of attacks may not be detected by your firewalls. So your firewall may not even see that type of attack and it may not even be detected by your access rules so when i say access rules i mean like your acl so this firewall and access rule may not be able to protect against attacks like this that's because most of the other devices that we have operate between layer 2 and layer 4 but viruses can get up to layer 7 and even those devices that have dpi that's deep packet inspection like the firewall they may not be able to handle attacks that misuse certain protocols. So this is why we need intrusion prevention systems and intrusion detection systems. What do they do? They are purposely built to inspect traffic that is going through a network or through a host. So it's not only network IPS that we have. We also have host IPS or IDS. So they are purposely built to inspect traffic through a network and raise alarms so they can generate alarms when an attack is detected and they can attempt to stop those attacks now let's talk about the difference between the two that's between an ips and an ids the basic difference is in their placement let's use diagrams to explain this if you have your system here and let's say this is a user and then let's say let's just say this is a router so this is your entire network now the ips is placed in line so it's placed in line in the traffic so let's just say this is coming from outside outside and you have a host here so the traffic going to this inside host goes through your ips so your IPS is actually placed in line. And when it's placed in line like that, it has more options. Like it can deny this connection. It can reset the connection. Now, if your network is like this, going to the router, going outside, outside, and this is maybe a host on the outside. Now, if your IDS is placed here, So there'll be like, this is like a switch connection. And then your IDS is connected here. Now this is how the IDS works in promiscuous mode. That's its place out of line. Promiscuous. So in promiscuous mode, you can see that it is not in the path of traffic. So the work of the switch here is that it's going to mirror the packet. So let's say the packet is coming like this. It's going to mirror that traffic, the packets of that traffic and send it to the IDS. The IDS is going to inspect that mirror of traffic and then it's able to say okay there's an attack here and then you can generate an alarm as you can see since the ids is not placed in band the actions that you can configure for it to take is limited when compared with the ips but you can also do some things like you can instruct this router so the ids can actually instruct the router to block that connection or things like that we're going to see some of these options so in general the ips prevent or it can attempt to prevent an attack and then the ideas detect an attack although it can also attempt to prevent the attack but the prevention mechanism is not inherent in the ideas it can just control other devices to prevent an attack now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of these systems so let's consider the ideas first the major advantage is that since it's not in line, that's it's not in the path of traffic, that means it does not introduce latency or delay to the traffic. But its major disadvantage is that it is limited 
in its prevention capabilities. So limited prevention capabilities. That's because the prevention capabilities is not of the IDS itself. It can just instruct other routers or switches or something to block that malicious traffic. Now, when we look at the IPS, the advantage is just the opposite of this. So it has prevention capabilities. So you have more prevention capabilities. And then the disadvantage is that because it's inline, you can introduce delay to the network traffic. Also, if the IPS fails for whatever reason, and there's no other path through the network, then you've basically black holed your entire traffic. Well, except the IDS is doing fail open. The opposite of fail open will be fail close. So fail close means that if I fail, then nothing should be able to pass through. Fail open means if I fail, then you should allow things to pass through. Now let's look at different intrusion detection methodologies. So how do these systems work? What methods do they use? Methodologies. Now according to the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, that's NIST, there are three main methods. And the first one is signature based detection. Detection. Now, if an attack is carried out in a particular way, then you can say this attack has a signature. For example, if it is known that an email with the subject pass CCNA security and then to have like an attachment of pass CCNA security dot exe so this would be the subject and this would be the attachment this is the signature of this particular attack so the ideas or whatever system that is using this type of methodology will just check through emails and then the subject of pass ccna coupled with an attachment titled pass ccna security signifies an attack but there's a problem with this type of detection method so it can only detect known attacks. That's why you always have to wait for an update of your antivirus or something, because some of them use signature based detection. But signature based detection can actually be very effective. And it is actually the most used type of detection. The second method that is used is anomaly based detection so an anomaly is something that is not normal therefore this detection method compares activities to a baseline so you have a baseline of what is considered normal and any activity that goes above the baseline according to certain thresholds will be considered an attack so for example if a department whose function deals with mainly sending emails so they don't consume a lot of bandwidth maybe they consume about 5% of your bandwidth. If that department suddenly starts consuming 90% of your bandwidth, then you know that there's a problem. And this is how the detection method works. This detection method is very effective against previously unknown attacks. And so it can provide protection for day zero attacks. Day zero attacks are just attacks that were previously unknown. Cool. The third type is the stateful protocol analysis. It is actually very similar to the deep packet inspection, but it is not restricted to network activities. You also have host activities also. So remember the TCP three-way handshake, SYN, SYNARC, and then arc in this order so if you see the arc before the scene then you know that there's an attack so it means that the protocol is being used in a way that it was not intended to be used 
Now we have other detection methodologies like policy based and also reputation based. And the good thing is that many idea systems do not use just one type of detection. They are able to combine more than one. So you can have an IPS system that uses stateful, anomaly, and signature based. And so they can be seen as hybrid systems. And even Cisco's implementation of the IPS is actually hybrid. So what are the possible actions that can be configured when an attack has been detected? Now for the IDS, well, in this case, I'm talking about the Cisco's implementation of the IDS. You could have the request block connection. So it's going to request whatever device. So maybe the router is going to request that device to block the connection. You also have request block host. So why one is just going to block that particular connection? This one is going to block the host completely. So when I say IDS, I mean these are the prevention actions that the IDS can be configured to take. But it also means that the IPS is also capable of providing these things. Now the ones that are specific to the IPS include denying the connection in line. So you notice here that the IPS is the one who is going to deny the connection. The IDS is going to request for the connection to be denied. You also have deny packets in line. So one will block the entire connection while the other one will just block the packet. You also have deny attacker in line. So it's similar to this request block host. Now, other actions that you can have include to just produce an alert. You could have logging actions so you can log what happened or you can reset TCP connections. Now, let's talk about terminologies that you have to be familiar with when it comes to IPS and IDS. The first one is true positive. Now true positive means that malicious packets pass through the network or pass through the host and then the IPS generated an alarm. Now the other good one is true negative. Now, true negative means that non-malicious packet pass through. So that's just normal traffic pass through the network and no alarm was generated. So these are the correct actions of the IPS. This means that the IPS took the correct actions. Now, the wrong actions are false positive. False positive means that non-malicious traffic pass through the network or pass through the host and an alarm was generated. Now the other wrong action is false negative. So false negative means that malicious traffic passed through and no alarm was generated. This has to be the worst because it means malicious traffic passed through and the IPS or the IDS did not detect it. False positive just means that you have a lot on your head and maybe people are being denied. But it's better to deny legitimate traffic than to allow illegitimate traffic. This brings us to the end of this video where we have been introduced to the intrusion prevention system and the intrusion detection system. We have considered why we need them. We have seen the disadvantages and advantages of either one of them. We have looked at different detection methods like signature based and anomaly based. We have seen the actions that can be taken and we have considered different terminologies like true positive and false negative. I hope you have found this video informative and I'd like to thank you for watching.
In this video, we'll discuss the different IPS solutions available from Cisco, including the Firepower series, Advanced Malware Protection, and the Fire Site Management Center. The same way Cisco moved from the Peaks to the ESA to the ESA X series, the Cisco IPS solutions have also evolved from the IDS to the IPS 4200 series sensors, and now we have the next generation IPS solutions. Now, this next gen IPS solutions include the Firepower series, the Advanced Malware Protection, and the Fire Site Management Center. This was actually due to Cisco's acquisition of SourceFire in 2013. SourceFire were the one behind Snort, Clam Antivirus, and other security related products. The Firepower series can come either as a physical appliance, such as the 7000 or 8000 series, or it can come as a virtual appliance. In a previous video, we also discussed that the Firepower services can come on the Cisco ESA 5500X series appliances. The advanced malware protection can be deployed on any of the Cisco Firepower appliances, but it also has its own dedicated appliances, including the AMP7150, AMP8150, and AMP8390. Finally, we have the Cisco Fireside Management Center, which basically just provides centralized management for the Firepower appliances, and it can also come as a physical hardware or a virtual appliance. So let me try to tie all these products together. The Cisco ASA 5500X series is a firewall that can come with the Firepower service, which is basically just an IPS service. But if we go further, the IPS can also be standalone, so it could be a dedicated solution separate from the ASA. And that's where you have the Cisco Firepower 7000 and 8000 series and also the virtual appliances. Now we can deploy the Cisco Advanced Malware Protection on any of the Firepower appliances to provide deeper level of protection against malware threats and other zero-day attacks. Finally, we use the Cisco Fireside Management Center for central management of the Firepower appliances. One common question organization ask is where should they place their IPS? Should they place it in front of a firewall or should they place it behind? The answer is that there are actually various deployment positions for the IPS depending on your network needs. When it comes to the perimeter of your network, you probably want to place the IPS behind the firewall so that the firewall will filter down the amount of traffic that the IPS has to take a deeper look at. You can place another IPS on the internal network to inspect traffic coming into the LAN. This brings us to the end of this video where we have discussed the IPS solutions available from Cisco, including the Firepower series, the Advanced Malware Protection, and the Fire Site Management Center. I hope you have found this video helpful and I look forward to the next one.